I think I'll lock you in. Clockwork Orange. No, I better not. My stuff's out there. <laughs> 1983, we were recording Diver Down, and half that record is cover tunes. And There's a lot of criticism about that. Why weren't you guys writing more music? Why aren't you being well, more creative? Well, that's why I built studio, because I would rather bomb with my own music than be the world's <laughs> biggest cover band, so to speak. So I built this place, but it was illegal. Because uh, it's against the zoning laws or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I built a racquetball court. <laughs> and here's the, uh, the, 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 the city uh, inspector. He's going, hmm, two-foot-thick cinder block, rebar-enforced concrete fill. Man, you must really worry about your neighbors. They're going, yeah, you know, I play late at night and hit the ball real hard, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which side of the glass do you like being on? Do you like being, uh, you, you'll play your stuff here? You'll literally I'm play actually the stuff here? I'm actually never on this side because I hate wearing headphones because it, 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 to me it, it, it isolates me from, I play in there. You, you play just, in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, see, my, my speaker cable goes to, through here to cabinets mm -hmm. and I, I keep the head in there and I plug straight into the head and, and I get the vibe to, you know, arm ears move. I, I like to feel it, yeah? Okay. That's the same board I have in my bathroom studio, which I wrote the whole record in. <laughs> Yeah. On the on the on the pot, you know, it's like uh, in the morning I relieve myself of toxins and new comes. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, seriously, where do ideas come from? You know, they're, they're just given. For unlawful carnal knowledge, I added, I knocked a hole in the wall there and added this room. And uh, this used to be just you know closed up. Right. And there was a doorway, and it was just storage. So for this record, I knocked this out. And you should have seen these engineers are going, ah, we don't know how to do it. Going, Can't you just put a damn metal pole to support that? And they go, hey, great idea. <laughs> so You're an architect. Anyway, this, this used to be just a tape storage room. And well, see all, all those tapes, especially the number numbered ones, um, those are all music that I've written since I built the studio. And what we, what Don Landy, who we did eight records with, right. um, we had a Radio Shack computer and we ended up numbering everything, punch it up on the computer and tell me what, what was on it. Well, the computer took a dump on us. Uh, we even took it to used laboratories to see if research laboratories see if they get any, anything off the hard drive and nothing. So all this stuff is waiting to be archived by somebody. Yeah, and the only person that can do that is me, because nobody knows what I like. But it's some dream job for somebody to sit in a room and spend the next year and a half listening to your music. I mean, there's so much stuff there. One day I just uh, you know, grabbed the ladder and went up there and. Uh -huh. Put it on, and it was uh, uh, right now, and it was labeled 1983, which is when you wrote it. The music, yeah, yeah. actually before Jump. Wow, I'm playing slide guitar on the nylon, <laughs> you know. But you can't do that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you can. You do anything. You know, it's not. It's music theory, not fact. You know, kind of like lawyers and doctors still practicing. <laughs> they ain't got it down yet, you know. But. Uh, it's music theory, not music fact, and there are no rules. I never learned how to read music. Um, maybe that's why I'm so twisted and unorthodox. But uh, if I would have taken guitar lessons, I wouldn't have done all, or I wouldn't do all silly stuff that I do. You know, whether people like it or not, it's, you know, it's their choice. So your son's yeah. in kindergarten? No, no, he's in first grade now. Okay. Um, but, uh, so he's got a music class once a week. And Wolfie asked me, he goes, you know, when you're, when you're doing that, that the high stuff on the guitar, which my mom used to say, why do you have to make that high crying noise? <laughs> go, well, you bought your house, didn't it? But uh, Wolfie goes, I really like it when you do that. And he goes, well, that's called improvising. Either, either you stray off the melody. Somebody else can get that. There you go. Oh, this is George there. Hello, George. 
studio manager and uh, building my pedal board and uh, electronic wizard here. Um, so anyway, he there it was uh, what do you call it? Pumpkin Day, Halloween. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're singing songs, and he's improvising. You know, straying off the melody a little bit. Well, the teacher gave him a time out, and Wolfie got pissed off. So he took up a, he picked up a pumpkin, threw it at the teacher. I go, well, next time, at least aim better and hit the guy. No. So I got a call from the principal, and I had to go down there, and I just uh, said, you know, there are no rules. I don't want my son learning that way. His life is, you know, he's surrounded by music all the time, and uh, I don't want him taught by a book. I've always been into building guitars, tearing them apart, and I've wasted a lot of guitars. I've stumbled onto a lot of a lot of great ideas, and like this this one I built. This is this is the original guitar that um, I mean, if people really saw this thing up close, <laughs> I mean. What happened was uh, the body is uh, Boogie Bodies. The one Wayne Charvel owned the place. This isn't the original neck because uh, uh, when I used to run, jump, and kick the amps, I, one one time my foot got stuck in the grill cloth and the <laughs> neck broke off. That's not good. But uh, you know, it's basically the same. But uh, but you know, I took it apart because I wanted a, a vibrato in it. This is this is pre Floyd Rose. Uh, on the first record, it's, it's uh, black and white, and I didn't know how to wire the stuff back up. See, this is a switch that's supposed to be there. <laughs> you know, the, the, anyway, I didn't know how to wire it back up, so I, I said to myself, I wonder what happens if you just take the pickup straight to, see how it says tone? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a volume knob, but when you turn it up, you get a nice tone. <laughs> so, and it worked. So I'm going, what the hell do I need anymore, you know? And people are going, well, what's that? What's that? And I'm going, secret. It's not even hooked up. It does nothing. <laughs> and I just used Schwinn. Looks great, though. I just used Schwinn bicycle paint and uh, stopped at a truck stop one night. And I'm going, hey, I want some reflectors for the end of the show. You know? And it's just, I don't know. I just, whatever. I collect stuff. And uh, it's an old cello that I kind of broke. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. This is great.